All right, you guys, this is a review and build that you guys have been requesting for a long time. So here it is, the Amun Les Paul style guitar kit that you can get from eBay or TomTop. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get going. Now, TomTop did send me this kit to review on my channel, but I'm going to level with you guys. TomTop does not sell this for the best price if you are located in the United States. Currently, they sell this kit for $139 and it ships from a warehouse in China, which means it's gonna take forever to get to the United States. Now, if you do a quick search on eBay, you'll actually find this exact same kit for around $125 and it ships from a US warehouse. Now, the funny thing is those eBay sellers have names like TomTop UK or TomTop Warehouse. So if you buy from them, you're likely still buying from TomTop anyway. But I'll go ahead and put links down in the description there for you guys. Now, unfortunately for me, eBay kicked me out of their affiliate program because they say I sell guns, which you guys know I don't. But no matter what I say, they came to that conclusion, they kicked me out anyway. So if you make purchases from those links, I'm not gonna earn any commission like I would if you bought from TomTop, but that's okay. I'm all about high-end guitar builds on a low-end budget, so I would never tell you guys to spend more money than you need to just so that I can earn a little bit of commission. It goes against everything that I believe in. So if you can find these kits cheaper somewhere else, by all means, please go there. And like I said, I did put those links in the description for you guys uh, for the cheapest deals that I could find as of the making of this video. Now, if you live outside the US, the TomTop website might be your best bet. So definitely check it out if you are interested in buying one of these kits. That's enough about where you can get this kit. Let's unbox it. This kit is both really beautiful and really rough. It's a set neck kit with a solid mahogany neck and body, which is very true to the classic Les Paul design. It features a beautiful flamed maple veneer, but as you can see on the body, there are no holes drilled for the tunematic style bridge and tailpiece. But if you look at the stock photos of this kit, you'll see that they're missing there too, so that's actually the way this kit is supposed to come. Why they don't drill the holes for your bridge and tailpiece? I have no idea. It's the only kit that I've seen that's like that. The fretboard is made out of some kind of engineered wood that's supposed to look like rosewood, no doubt because of the import and export ban on rosewood these days. And while it's perfectly functional, it's not really beautiful. It lacks that nice wood grain that you would get from an actual rosewood fretboard. The neck has medium sized frets and they do seem to be seated pretty well and they look like they've been leveled and crowned. The fret ends were really sharp as I usually find on these kits. So I did knock off those burrs with some sandpaper before I built it. That way I don't cut up my fingers while I'm demoing it for you. The mahogany on this kit is extremely rough on both the neck and the body. And there are lots of spots that are saturated with glue stains. So to get a beautiful transparent finish on this thing, we're gonna need to do a ton of sanding. And you guys know how much I love sanding. The neck pocket was way too sloppy for the neck on this thing. And because it's a set neck kit, you really do need good neck to body contact in order for that glue to hold the joint properly. So this is a real disappointment for sure because before you can glue in the neck, you'll need to glue in some shims so that you can get a tighter fit. Lastly, the binding right here by the neck pocket was way too tall, again, interfering with the neck and body fit. So it's yet another thing we need to fix before we can even put this thing together to demo it. I was shocked to find that the electronics on this thing actually came pre-wired, which was nice because Les Pauls are not the easiest guitars to wire because the pickup wires need to go to your volume and tone pots and then go back up to the switch and then back down to the output jack. Now, pre-wired harnesses are something that I do expect to see on lower end beginner kits, but but I would not consider this a beginner kit because of all the problems we need to fix and because of needing to drill and set the bridge and tailpiece posts. So it was a nice bonus that they did actually pre-wire the electronics for us. The only issue was that they used linear pots for the volume and audio taper pots for the tone. And that's actually backwards from what you want. And I'll explain that a little bit more later, but for the sake of this review, I just left them as is. Okay, now let's build this kit. Now, typically, if you're building a set neck kit like this one, the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually finish sand it, apply your stains and your finish that you want, and then glue it together. It's not a good idea to glue it together before you do all that. And I have done it with mediocre results, so it is possible. Um, but it's much better for you to get your stains and finish and everything done before you glue. Now, I don't feel like doing that right now, so I'm actually just going to bolt on this neck. Now, a lot of people have asked me, is it okay to convert a set neck kit to a bolt-on style neck and body kit? And the answer is a resounding definite maybe. And the reason is because it actually varies from kit to kit. So you have to use a little bit of your own personal judgment on that. If you look at this kit, 
you'll see that it is not only made out of mahogany, which is a very strong, very sturdy wood, but it does have quite a bit of meat right there at the base of the neck pocket. So it will hold, if we bolt on a neck, it will hold on to right there just fine. Also, if you look at this solid mahogany neck, there's actually a cutout right here. And so that cutout, when we stick it down on here, is gonna press up against the body and add additional support. So I have zero reservations that the string tension will be strong enough to pull this neck out if we bolt it in. Now I'm gonna show you the example of a set neck kit that's not a good candidate for a bolt-on conversion. Sort of a sneak preview into the next kit that I'm gonna be building. This is a Gibson ES hollow body style base kit, actually. And if you look at this piece right here, it's quite a bit thinner and it's made out of basswood with just a really thin plywood veneer over the top. So this is not gonna be nearly as sturdy and it's not gonna be able to support a neck, not to mention the fact that the back is actually carved, so it's not perfectly flat, so it wouldn't even make a good spot to put in a neck plate on the back. So this kit, I'm going to have to sand and stain and finish before I glue it together if I wanna get good results, which I don't want to do with the Les Paul kit today, um, so I'm just gonna bolt that sucker on. Now, overall build time for this was about four hours, and that includes my bolt-on conversion, as well as a trip to the hardware store to pick up the correct size drill bit for drilling and mounting those bridge post holes. And the correct size drill bit is 29 64ths, by the way. Would have never guessed that. Now, four hours is a long time for me to build one of these kits. Usually I can knock them out in about one to two hours, but shimming the neck and cutting down the binding and measuring and drilling the holes for the bridge and tailpiece added a significant amount of time onto this build. Also, in my video about the tools that you need for guitar kit building, I mentioned that you don't actually need a drill press and that you can usually just use a hand drill to do all the things that you would need to do to build a kit. Well, for setting the post for your bridge, that's one of those things that you're really gonna wanna use a drill press for. Because if those holes are not straight up and down, when you go to adjust the action of your bridge, you're gonna have some serious issues. Now, if you don't have access to the correct size drill bit or a drill press, but you still wanna build a Les Paul kit, I encourage you to check out the fretwire.com or bargainmusician.com. Both of them sell kits very similar to this one, and those holes are already pre-drilled for you. Now, they are a little bit more expensive, so, in addition to the links down there, I put in my coupon codes for you guys to use so you can save a little bit of money on those kits. Okay, now that it's built, let's see how it sounds. For this demo, as always, I'm gonna be recording directly into Logic Pro and I'm going to be using two different amp simulations. I'm gonna be using the Boutique Tweed amp simulation and the American Stack amp simulation. I'm doing this because the Les Paul is one of the most versatile guitars and it's used in a lot of different genres. So I did wanna show off the versatility just a little bit. Does it gent? Well, I guess it does. Quite well, actually.
Now I gotta say, despite all the issues that I have with this kit, it does actually play and sound pretty dang good. Now, the nut piece is just a tad too tall for it to be a perfect action, but that's an easy fix. And even as is, I was able to set up with a good low action with fret buzz in only three spots. I'll show you real quick. We got the uh, 14th fret on the E string. So that needs to be fixed. Uh, the 11th fret on the D string. You hear that sort of like sitar type sound. So that'll need to be fixed. And then the 20th fret on the high E string. Not as noticeable, but only three spots that I'm gonna need to knock down just a little bit to get this thing to be a perfect playing guitar. So all in all, not too bad at all. Usually on these kits, I end up doing a complete leveling and crowning. And so for this one, I don't need to. Just knock down those three spots and I'll be good. So that's definitely a plus. Now, as far as the sound, I'm actually pleasantly surprised by these pickups. I expected them to be much more dark and soggy sounding like the humbuckers that typically come on these kits, but these don't sound all that bad. This neck pickup measured at about six and a half to seven kilo ohms, which is pretty low output for one of these PAF style humbuckers. And that makes it a pretty excellent choice for like blues music or classic rock or any of those like slightly overdriven sounds because it's still a pretty nice, bright and clear sounding pickup. The bridge pickup, however, was wound really hot at about 12 and a half kilo ohms, which makes it a good choice for a nice crunchy pickup for heavier rock or metal. Now, as much as I did like these pickups, it breaks my heart to tell you that they are not wax potted which means they are very susceptible to feedback. Now for this demo, I did just use amp simulation in my recording software, so it wasn't a big deal. But when I plug these things into my amp, they did feedback like crazy. So I will need to replace them because they are not really usable. The good news is that if you wanted to build this kit and you didn't have the money to upgrade the pickups right away, they do actually sound pretty good and you can put them in there until you can save up a little extra cash to upgrade them later. As long as you're not playing any gigs in really loud, crazy venues, you're gonna be fine. Okay, now the last thing about the sound is, as I mentioned earlier, the guitar was wired backwards with linear taper pots for the volumes and audio taper pots for the tones. Well, the problem with using a linear taper pot for the volume is that Volume is not perceived linearly. I do plan to make a more in-depth video on guitar electronics and soldering, and I'll explain a little bit better the difference between linear and audio taper pots. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to demo for you what a linear volume pot does. Okay, so I'm just going to strum a chord, and then I'm gonna slowly roll the volume off. Did you see how it only did a minimal adjustment until the very end and then it seemed to just dive off like a tank? Now listen, reverse. I'm gonna strum the chord and then slowly turn the volume up. So with a linear taper pot for your volume, you get 90% of your volume in the first 5% of your pot. So it's just not ideal if you wanna have more control over your volume or to get really nice smooth volume swells. And that's why you need audio taper pots for your volume controls. And again, I'll explain that more in an upcoming video. Okay, let's summarize. Things that are cool. It's got a beautiful flame maple veneer. It's got mostly level frets, so it's easy to set up with a good playable action. It's got pre-wired electronics and the pickups actually sound pretty okay. Things that suck. There are glue spots everywhere. There's a bad neck to body fit. There were no holes drilled for the bridge and tailpiece. The binding was too tall in some spots. Though the harness was pre-wired, it was wired incorrectly with the wrong value pots. And the pickups are not wax potted, which means they feedback like mad. And I think that's about it. So it's sort of a less Paul. It's a, it's a more or less Paul. <laughs>